Hey there, it's your girl Demetria McKinney from Real Housewives of Atlanta, and you are tuned in right now to Raw Hollywood. What's going on everyone? This is Virgil, represent for RawHollywood.com and today I am chatting with a very special guest, singer and Real Housewives of Atlanta star, Demetria McKinney. How are you? I am great. How are you? I am wonderful. Now that I get to talk to you, we get to chat. Yes, honey. Okay, now we're going to start off with I remember when I first got the pleasure to see you on TV on Tyler Perry's um, House of Pain. On on that show, how was it working with Tyler? And like, what's some of the things that you learned during the course of the time that you were on that show? Oh wow, some of the things I learned about being on not not just being on House of Pain, but playing Janine mm -hmm. was that I had to be quick on my feet. I had to be completely in touch with every feeling I possess and that I had to live in the moment you know um being an actress you kind of develop these different things that, that kind of work for you to get into your zone right and um and with the ever-changing platform that is Tyler Perry honey if I'm able to keep up with him I can keep up with anybody <laughs> so he, he definitely prepared me for everything else that was to come yeah I'm pretty sure you learned a lot from him because his brand is just continuously growing yeah, he's a visionary, you know, and he's the architect of his own future, and he taught me that. I want to make sure that I design who I'm going to be as I go, not anybody else. I agree. Now, moving on to the, the music side, you did a collaboration with DeBrat on your single 100. How was it working with DeBrat? Yo, she is none of what you expect and everything that you see. Um, this woman has been in the game for a really long time. She's got the credentials. She's got the knowledge. She's got the time behind her. But she is still so humble. She's so gracious. She remembers every detail. And she's so inclusive. Um, when she was in the studio, she was like, so what you think if I say this? And I'm like, <laughs> me? I don't wear Christmas gifts. How you gonna ask me about your rap? You know, it was, it was just such an honor and a thrill to work with with such a legend and a humble person at the same time. And she's been supported the whole time. Like, she came out to Puerto Rico when I performed uh, right. on Real Housewives. We've done shows together. We just opened together for um, R. Kelly about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Wow. And we still keep in contact. We talked this morning. So she has become a dear friend who I still look to as a fan. Right. Do you guys have any plans on working on any other future projects? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love her vibe, I love her flow, and I love her mindset. So I would love to continue to work with her. Yeah, I would most definitely love to see that because I loved 100. Oh, thank you, honey. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now, your new single, Trade It All, mm -hmm. I know that tomorrow you will be supplying your fans with the actual visual for the song. Correct. But what is like going to detail about what that song is all about? All right, check it. No, I was in Atlanta. Was a shock to the system. It's like jumping into a big, big pool of ice cold water. You know, you can try to prepare yourself as much as you want, but you are never ready. Um, and when my relationship was put on the front burner. You know, everybody has something to say. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got, including the ladies on the show. Mm -hmm. Things are not necessarily perfect themselves. So what reality television was showing of my relationship was not it and was not all. And I really wanted Trade It All to be about being in the relationship with the person that you love. I genuinely, we, we love each other. That's my best friend. We do everything together. So the biggest caveat for Trade It All was if I'm willing to, for all the other opportunities I have in other people, because <laughs> I, I got options, uh, <laughs> or to ignore everything that these 3.5 million people have to say about my relationship that they're just now getting into. You know, can I guarantee that if I'm trading all of this in, that you're going to trade it all for me? Is it going to end in marriage? You know? Right. And I think that there are so many women in, in my same situation who can relate. You know, it may not be marriage, but you know, can can we make this exclusive? It may be, can you claim your child? Can you, you know, it's just about really being all in for the person that you're with, period, point blank. And so with the video, I wanted to show the difference between the reality that people think they see 
see on these reality shows because that is not the whole story versus what's going on behind the scenes. So you get to see a little bit of, of my real relationships in that video, and it's super hot. Derek Blank uh, directed it. His eye is incredible, and I'm so excited to be releasing this tomorrow. Right, I know you have a few cameos. Who's going to be in the actual video? Because I know some of the some of the ladies from the show is going to be in the video. You know, I wanted it to be as close to my reality as possible. So right. on the reality show, they see me really click with Cynthia and Claudia, and off of the camera, they see me click with Cynthia and Claudia. Right. They're definitely there. My love interest, my 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 Robert Bob, <laughs> plays <laughs> by Keith Carlos, who's the the newest winner of America's Next Top Model. Uh -huh. You know, and, and of course, I don't know how many people can't love Dallas, but Dallas is stylist. My boy is in there. But you yes. know, we, we've got some real things going on in this one. Right. Now, I just want to touch on, you know, you said that, you know, some people had their their negative opinions about your relationship. And I remember when I seen the episode when you guys were, were at Candy's house and yeah. this nameless person said some things about your relationship. How did you feel in that moment? Like, we seen you walk out. I don't know if it was the way they edited it, but how did you feel in that moment? In that moment, I was like, why is this blog saying that? Right. You know, whether it was true or not was irrelevant to me because mm -hmm. it was at a point where we weren't together. And she asked me, she said, so a year and a half, two years ago, we got together? I was like, yeah, we were, we were apart about a year and a half, two years ago, yeah. Oh, well, I needed it too. <laughs> yeah, I just... Now, I... The, shock, the shock that people saw on my face, let me be clear, the shock people saw on my face was not that he didn't do whatever he did while he was not with me. That's not my business. But I just didn't expect, that's where you dated him? From. I didn't expect her to make that happen. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, but it, there's but there's definitely a difference between what you do to do something and what you get in a relationship with. And I'm not trying to throw no shade or <laughs> rehash any hurt feelings or whatever, whatever. But it was just a moment that I didn't feel was a good look for her, and it was so old and irrelevant that it just it, that's why I was like, let me get up. I'm not trying to give her no more than these three minutes she got right now. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. <laughs> now we're going to jump into a fan question from Lena Davis. Her question is, do you miss doing House of Pain? And what was your favorite part about the show? I definitely miss doing House of Pain. It was my first really big thing and it lasted and it made so many um, benchmarks in my career that, that there's no way I could forget my first love, really. Um, what I missed the most was the blocking. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and that's weird because you block for every situation that you're in. But watching Mr. Perry work and watching us all come together and not knowing if we were necessarily going to stick with the script that we just blocked for. I mean, you always had to be on your toes. That blocking is when you decided, hey, this isn't going to work. I don't like it. Let's go again. And we still had to record that day, that whole episode. Right. So it was an adrenaline rush, and it was a sharpening tool, and it was an opportunity for people of all different um, stages of their career. You know, China, that was her very first thing, and look where she is, Doc, same thing. And then you've got, you know, Alan Payne and, and Keisha Nicole, mm -hmm. and then you got me and Lance somewhere in the middle. You know, we all came together, and we still made that thing happen. The blocking for me was when the teamwork really came out. Right. Okay, now... I recently saw a video of you um, performing the classic song by Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. How has she inspired you as a music artist? She inspires me every day, and she has been doing that since the very first time I heard um, I Want to Dance With Somebody, or Greatest Love of All, or You Give Good Love. You know, um, that woman's voice was her gift, is her gift, even on today. Even mm -hmm. on today. You know you're in church when you say on today. Yes. <laughs> um, she, she influenced who I wanted to be vocally. And there's no way that I will ever say that I can parallel her or even attempt to put my pinky toe in that shoe. But at the same time, I want to do her justice when I do these tributes. I want her spirit and her family to know that she really meant something to me. It's not a gimmick. It's not a a moment for me to shine myself, you know, she got me through. Like, I went through some stuff, been through some things. Um, my mother is still married to the dude who liked me a little too much. I've been homeless. I'm a single mom. You know, I, I started having 
or started having kids. Like, I got multiple. I had my son <laughs> at a younger age than I wanted to. And Whitney Houston's voice was always the soundtrack of my life. Right. Said and sung what I couldn't figure out how to emote. And I will always love her for that. I agree. She was a, she's very irreplaceable in this industry. Absolutely. Another fan question comes from Aisha Marie, who is the owner of the Demetria fan site. Hi, Aisha! <laughs> Her question is, what is your favorite all-time song and favorite current song on the radio? My favorite all-time song and favorite current song on the radio. Right now, my favorite current song, I would have to say, is Only with Nicki Minaj and Drake and Lil Wayne. Okay. It's just stupid. It's stupid. <laughs> the way that they have their punchlines, the way they vibe off each other, mm-hmm. you know, Drake talking about, I mean, who are, who's fly at me, basically. You mm-hmm. know, his swag on there is undeniable. Um, Nicki is just so strong. Her presence is, is crazy. And then Wayne, I mean, hey, what else can you say? You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> it's just a great collaboration, period. Um, one of my favorite songs of all time is, um, Don't You Remember You Told Me I Love It, Baby. Who's the Yes. Um, <laughs> he had a buttery, velvety, silky thing going on with his voice that could ease anything that was going on. And I love Whitney. And I will always love Whitney. And her songs, I can't give you one of hers. That's why I had to deviate a little bit. Uh-huh. But that song right there expressed so much in such a beautiful way that I, I will never forget it. Now, what was the... Before, like, when you first got the offer to join Housewives of Atlanta, did you have any... Like, was it a full yes? Was it a no at first and you changed? Like, how was your feelings on it? Especially from uh, what's been going on in past seasons. <laughs> what you're hearing right now is exactly what I did. Ooh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I laughed in a way that wasn't funny. It's like, now, I know some of the shenanigans that go on on this show, but I'm thinking it's got to be TV. You know, these women can't really be like that. And I knew a couple of them. I knew Cynthia. So I knew Cynthia was who she was through and through. She is genuinely a sweet, sincere person, Mm -hmm. period. I knew Portia prior to the divorce. But after the divorce, I had to get to re-know Portia all over again because that thing has evolved. Let's put it that way. (laughs) Um, And Candy is is who Candy is. Candy has always been cordial, always been cool, and that didn't deviate once I got on the show. Now, deciding to get on it, you know, took a lot of prayer, took a lot of time. I had to talk to the two men in my life, my son and my dude, because I knew that everything about us was going to be put on display by some people who really don't care to be kind or or look beyond a moment into the positivity. Right. Because that's just not what the show is. Even though they sold me on it by saying they wanted to change the image. Ha ha, stupid dee dee. Um, so getting getting into it was, was not something that I took lightly, and I tried my best to prepare for it. But like I said, there's never any way to be ready for that thing. Right now, when you say change the image, do you really think that was just the way for them to pull you in, or do you, or do you think oh, they? Oh hell yeah! Uh, oh, can I say that? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, that, 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 because they. I don't know if you saw last night. Did you see it last night's episode? Of course, I did. <laughs> Like, okay, you know what? And people have been commenting that they saw me smirking. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, because I thought the whole thing was asinine. I it, 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 was, it was stupid. We just had just gotten back from Puerto Rico, hadn't yeah. seen each other, and we going to come into this. But even more than the situation, you know, I just didn't feel like, I don't feel like the ladies necessarily realize that what they get sometimes is what they give. Um, I did a post. <laughs> yes, I, I just seen it. <laughs> and that was my I next question. Give, <laughs> I didn't give my opinion. I didn't shade anybody. You know, I was on my page. I didn't go to nobody else's page. I right. said, you're stupid. You da, 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 da. I didn't cut somebody out. I didn't defame anybody. I did not spread any falsity mm-hmm. on my page. I said, listen, I had to give a, a unnecessary apology in order for the beef to be squashed. Mm-hmm. I didn't get an apology back. That's not mm-hmm. what he does, apparently, in my opinion. Okay? 
So for you to have called somebody a whore for two years and now to be called a whore yourself and to be upset about it, honey, bye. It's stupid. <laughs> And I don't know if it was the editing of the episode, but did Cynthia kind of stir the pot? Because it seemed like she wanted to say it, but she pulled back. And then she tried to say it, and she pulled back. So was that just how the editing went? Or did she, like, how did that go? No, she genuinely struggled with that. Okay. She genuinely struggled with that. And it wasn't because she didn't know how. I mean, we all know how to read. We all know how to throw shade or whatever. But she didn't want it to be a shady moment. Okay. Even though it was bad information, right? Um, it was it was presented at the table because every situation. Let's be clear: every situation when we gotta drop a bomb, don't nobody pull nobody to the side on this show. And that was my first mistake. I thought it was like you know, let's talk about it over here. We'll cool about yeah. that. We'll pray after and go get some bread. Okay? No, that's not how this show works. No. Everybody gets off on the salaciousness, and for everybody to have something to say about how she said it or she shouldn't have said it or whatever, that's like saying, okay, well, if we're saying we shouldn't be buying into the rumors, 3.5 million people tuned in to watch the rumor mill, to watch the shade, to watch the slander, to watch, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly what they watch for. That's what they watch for. So it's like, you know, at the point that she has to drop this bomb, because it's, it's just right, it, it, it's not what she wanted to do, but it makes no sense for one to call somebody this and then be over here possibly doing the same thing. And in my blog, I was, or not in my blog, on my IG, I said, you know, at the point that she apologized to Kenya when Apollo said it was a lie, there would have been no cause for Kenya to have any legs to stand on last night. Right. This has been brewing for a very long time. Mm-hmm. So I just hope everybody grew and learned from it, honey. But yeah, I was like, okay, this, uh, can I eat? So, <laughs> now, I know, like, you know, the show is built, it's like, its platform is drama before anything else. Absolutely. Is, are the ladies on the show... Are they as bad as some of them are depicted on the show? Like, you have some people that are the villains of the show, but from since you are actually in this situation, is it true or is it partial true? Or how do you feel about that? I think all the women are, dim- all the women are diamonds on this show. Okay. And I say that because we're all multifaceted. We all have our different colors and our different layers to us. Now, at different times, we might shine a little brighter than others. But I think that people just have to take a moment and make sure that they look at the whole diamond and see the beauty in it versus the dark shimmer that's coming from the underbelly of it. Right. Um, there are definitely people who like to start stuff and then run crying when it gets brought back to them. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, when, when Phaedra was coming for me, I let her have it because of her situation. I let her have that. You can have that when you can have that. But when I clap back, all of a sudden I'm wrong. We have to be aware of the whole situation. You can't just take that one episode and decide what's mm-hmm. right or wrong. The build-up is a continuation. Mm-hmm. It's like a daytime story almost. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there, there are people who like to play the darker color of their diamonds than others. Mm-hmm. But um, for the most part, we, we all have our little shipping spot. Right. I, I will say that the episode when you guys were in Puerto Rico and you said to Phaedra... Um, I guess the difference between me and your man, my man and your man, is yours is going for eight, mine has been here for eight. I thought that was like effortless, smooth shade. It might have been true, but I thought it was hilarious. Let me tell you what you will never catch me doing. I will not slander anybody. Mm-hmm. I hate liars. Mm-hmm. I just, I can't deal with a lie. If you lie, you'll steal, you'll steal, you'll kill. Ooh, that's just a slippery slope right there. Right. You know what I mean? So at the point that I have to read you, I don't have to look for anything. Mm -hmm. I already know enough about you. I've already figured you out. So I'm going to just hit you with your own truth and let you deal with it in the public eye the way you try to just shine me on some falsity. Right. Okay. I like it. And and from the things I've seen of you on the show versus even the, the IG post that, you know, you were just talking about, 
you came from a very, not trying to do the, the below the belt shade or anything, I feel as though you came from a very honest, respectable adult place. So I, Thank you. I yeah, honestly, I, I like that. Here. Thank you. That's all I've ever tried to do. You know, um, everybody has their opinion. The way we express it is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's everything, actually. Right. You know, I have to walk up and say, hey, you have a little in your nose. You might want to go get a, a, a tissue. Or, <laughs> you know, snort a little bit. That's different than me blasting. Hey, y'all see that? Be flying and waving every time she breathes. You know, and then I get mad because you're Right. I can't, it, it's just, it's stupid to me. It's asinine. So I wanted to come with a different option as to how to handle things for the ladies who don't necessarily see themselves on that show. That's one of the beautiful things about it. You know, there are so many different colors and, and um, opportunities to get to know each of these women and figure out who you best mesh with. Okay. Now, if ever offered, would you return for another season of Real Housewives? Oh, honey. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> this show, the ultimate decision came from me wanting to showcase the fact that I am a artist, a sing. And literally, after Puerto Rico, honey, I was cool on this show. I was straight, don't care if I just sit there and smile the whole time. I'm going to twerk my way to the end of this season and be happy because now people know I'm a singer and I've accomplished what I came to the platform for. I didn't come for the shade, I didn't come for the drama, I didn't come for the bulls, bitch. So, if they asked me to come back and they were really willing to focus on my talent being my storyline, then I would have no problem with it because now I know how the whole thing works and I'm not walking in, you know, looking crazy. Right. Um, but if it doesn't happen, mission accomplished. I'm happy. I've learned. I've mm -hmm. grown. And let's get this music thing popped in the way it already is. Exactly. Now, speaking of music, when, when can we expect an album? will actually be out this quarter. It's called Officially Yours, which right. is actually one of the, the songs on the EP. Right. Um, and it's really just a look into what you might not know about Demetria. Mm -hmm. You know, 100 was an introductory song because it was completely different from any character anybody had seen me play. They didn't know I said Negro say. They didn't know I'll, I'll sit on something, right. you know? But I do it all in a grown, sexy way. Right. Um, Traded all shows a vulnerability that I'm not afraid of. And so anybody in love is going to be able to relate to that. You just get a chance to realize that I'm actually your homegirl, not just a housewife. I'll call myself that because I definitely ain't married. <laughs> or a character from any of your shows. I'm a real person with real situations. Okay, sounds great. Are there any TV or movie projects that, you know, your fans can expect from you in the future? Oh, absolutely. I ain't quit my day job. Oh, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two movies coming out. One is called Let the Church Say Amen. It's coming out on BET this year. It was directed by Regina King. stars myself, Jose Sanchez, and Tori Naughton. It's got Lila Rashad. I mean, it's just a really good faith-based story that talks about how the faith work doesn't come without child. Right, okay. Um, That's amazing. The second one, yeah, it's, it's really cool. The second one is called Sons to the Grave. Now, this one was directed by Michael T. Williams. Okay. He plays Bubba Gump on Forest Gump, amongst other things. Oh, okay. Um, and that stars myself, Aaron Henson, and Atlantic recording artist Trevor Jackson. This mm -hmm. takes a serious look into what's happening in our inner city. You know, we have talented young men, young ladies mm -hmm. there, but they just haven't given the opportunity, whether it's snatched by circumstance or snatched by their own decision. Right. Either way, we're snatching too many opportunities that, that are deserved, and we really need to make some changes happen so that the Trayvon Martin situation don't continue to run rampant and we don't continue to repeat history. I'm really excited about both of those projects. I also just got um, another pilot for a sitcom, grown and sexy sitcom, okay. um, starring myself, Lamont Rucker, Essence Atkins, Jennifer Fox, Carl Payne, Tony Rock. I mean, this thing is filled with not only great people, but great writing. You're going to love it. I'm, I'm expecting a call in the next five minutes for the thing to be picked up. That's, that's how much I believe in it. It's going to be amazing. Okay. Now, you're a singer. You know, you're a music artist. How do you feel about Empire? I'm happy for the success of Empire. I have been so busy 
movie that I really haven't gotten a chance to really get into it. Uh-huh. Like, I think the first time I saw it, I saw Terrence Howard's term and ass shot, and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> um, but despite, despite that moment, you know, I'm hearing Cookie is killing it. I heard um, one of the gentlemen who's the, the sons just got signed, right? Yes, um, Jesse just got signed to Columbia Records. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm hearing about it just like I used to hear, or, or still do, but just like I hear about Real Housewives, I love the fact that we are standing up like this. Empire, scandal, even with the shenanigans of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yes. How, <laughs> how we're making our mark. I just hope that we really appreciate it and that we use the platform wisely. I agree. Now, before you go, you know, there's, there's, tons of men and women you know growing up and they want to break into this music industry what advice would you give to to them learn your voice by your life okay um i came into this of, of course a fan of whitney mm-hmm. of course listening to shaka khan of course listening to mariah carey and alia and pink and and nirvana and you know i listen to so many different people and i could basically do a good imitation of them, but I was so focused on what they were doing that I didn't find my voice until maybe five, six years ago. Okay. Um, and life really had to kick my butt for me to get there. Right. You know? So I realized who I was as a person was going to make me who I am as an artist. And once you know that, and once you're really just being true to yourself, the size the limit. I completely agree. I really want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule because, I, like I said, I find you on social media and you, you, you bouncing all over the place. <laughs> so I'm really thankful. I'm really thankful. And also, I, I seen your outfits from Fat New York Fashion Week and you was looking real nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. Really, really good tool. Yes. And I'm really blessed with the opportunity. I'm really thankful to have met each of the ladies and mm-hmm. what they have contributed to my life, whether good or bad, because it continues to make me be the person I am going to be. Thank you to everybody who, by watching me, has made um, 100 Shoot All the Way to number four on iTunes, Train It All, who's already in the top 40. You know, and we haven't even done the push for it yet. So, right. with the video coming out, and the music coming out, and the TV shows coming out, and I'm opening to different things. We're going to be involved with Funk Fest. I know I'm getting a whole bunch of information all at the same time. But it's all to say that I can still feel so blessed and I'm thankful to everybody, especially the Demetrian. Of course, because they, they have been, they've been flooding. They've been wanting this interview. So here you guys go. You heard it straight from Demetria. 